In this round table conference, we will be deliberating on flagship projects of Government of India, CBCS system, Skill India mission, technology in ODL, and instructional technology and CBCS system. First of all, I request Professor Ram Takaule, Founder Vice Chancellor of this University, Professor Ravindra Kumar, Vice Chancellor IGNU, and Mr. B.K. Badri, Educational Advisor, to come on the dais. I also request our Honorable Vice Chancellor, Professor Sarunke Sir, and Honorable Registrar, Dr. Prakash Atkare, and request to come on the dais and offer floral tribute to Yashwantrao Chauhan. Song. song just now played this is written by great uh, poem poet kusuma graj viva shirwadkar and this song is uh, daily played in the university at 11 am in all the buildings a very good morning once again now i request our vice chancellor professor salunke sir to deliver a welcome address Very good morning to you all. A hearty welcome to you all and greetings from YCMOU. 
Honorable Professor R.G. Thakole, senior academician in the country, founder vice chancellor of this university, as well as a vice chancellor of IBNU and Pune University. Professor Ravindra Kumarji, vice chancellor of Indira Gandhi National Open University. Mr. B.K. Badri, assistant educational advisor, MHRD. Registrar, Madam Renu Batra, respected Vice Chancellors of all state open universities, faculty members, ladies and gentlemen. I welcome you all for high level round table of Vice Chancellors of state open universities hosted by YCMOU at this lush green campus, Nyana Gangotri. I take this opportunity to extend cordial welcome those who are on dais as well as those who are on the off dais and assistant advisor MHRD UGC representative. The experience and expertise of all these dignitaries would certainly enrich the deliberations of the round table. At the outset I would like to thank MHRD for extending very generous support to host this round table. When I met uh, Badriji in Malaysia, and that time we decided to have such type of conference, immediately he agreed, immediately he asked me to write a proposal, and immediately I could receive letter from the MHRD. It is indeed an honor and privilege given to YCMU to host this imminent event. This is a leading platform for state open universities to network and to be engaged in academic discourse in areas of common interest at present and in future too. At present, we are at crucial stage of socio-economic development. We all are aware about the rapidly changing economic, educational and social scenario in the country. The Prime Minister of our country is very keen to implement Skill India, Startup India, projects on massive scale covering all sectors of development. Accordingly, we have included these two themes for this event. Accordingly, we have included also theme on Future technology will be MOOC, and I'm very happy Professor Fatak, he is here. And I'm really happy, he is so busy, but this time at least he could accept the invitation and uh, he will be in Nasik for this particular, his delivery, he's from IIT Mumbai. Aware of the UGC directed to implement choice-based credit system, policy for all degree colleges across the universities in India. Therefore, streamlining the progress of state university as per choice-based credit system pattern is an urgent need. And thus, choice-based credit system has forms a theme of the round table. The ODL system faces many challenges and threats also. Keeping all these themes in mind, we have attempted to plan the schedule of this round table. We have invited eminent academician and policymaker to present their views and thoughts pertaining to this theme. At the present time, we have tried to provide adequate time for you all to undertake exhaustive discussions instead of having only lectures and to make scholarly recommendations. Being policy makers and administrator, we also need to assimilate and implement various activities as per the change norms. I'm sure you will agree that there is a greater responsibility on ODL CSP in the changed environment so as to keep ourselves in the mainstream. The central and state governments are keen to spread educational opportunities to the last segment of the society. At the same time, Various regulatory and apex bodies also try their best to maintain quality of education. In this situation, role of state open universities becomes even more difficult. 
as we have to maintain the balance while achieving our main purpose of outreaching to unrich segment of the society at the juncture i have no doubt that the present round table would surely provide workable recommendations and solutions to various issues and challenges faced by odl in addition i have additional aspect to view this round table at the end of this round table we should form an association of state open universities it would provide a platform not only solving problems but also to share the best practices followed amongst us at the same time we can jointly interact with the central and state governments as well as various regulatory apex bodies ugc nct aict so this association will act as a liaison between the state open university and central and state government and various apex bodies in this context I would like to share my experience. I many times interact with AIU. There are AIU conferences, but my experience they are not giving any attention towards state open universities because you know the majority universities are the members are traditional universities. And last meeting also I discussed debated this particular issue, but they are not giving attention towards the problems of open and distance. learning so i will request you we can form a association and it's not necessary always we have to meet always we meet in ugc for some conference that time one day we can go to a, either igno or we can go to the aiu have one day meeting and discuss our problems so we can meet hrd minister badri ji or whatever ugc representative and it will be possible for us to solve our problems in my opinion forming an association would not involve much expenditure also we frequently meet ugc deb meetings by rotation vice chancellors of state open universities hold a meeting or dinner to discuss the issues amongst us now you are in our campus so i thought that i will make a brief presentation few minutes about our university established in 1989 and professor takole was founder vice chancellor and objective of our university to provide technical vocational professional and liberal education through modern communication technologies and adoption of the distance education methodology our vision is to become a mass university motto is knowledge to every home mission reaching the unreached through innovative applications of technology supported distance education journey since 1989 we started with one school and now we have nine schools 166 programs student strength close to 7 lakh study centers close to 3800 the awards which we have received we are listed among the mega open university in the world many awards and honors including the coveted award of institutional excellence in distance education from commonwealth of learning canada from in 2002 ranked second among all distance education providers in the country for three successive years as per the nationwide survey of career 360 recipient of shared university research grant from IBM USA in 2011 and you could see we could start with the three programs now 166 student strength in the beginning it was 3700 now we are close to 7 lakh now what kind of technological intervention this year we have 100% online admission we could register 7 lakh students online then this year even we have delivered question papers online the we call secure remote paper delivery system at 755 centers all question papers were delivered through internet then pre printed every individual student could get pre printed answer booklets with the name signature everything was there on the pre printed and script this year also we could start 
the scanning of 100 percent, we have 45 lakh answer scripts. All answer scripts are scanned at the university, and the examiners are evaluating all answer scripts on screen. And nobody will believe this particular data, what I am going to present, and I will request the work is going on in our examination section. I will be happy if you could visit the actually the place and how we are working in a day we could scan more than 1.5 lakh answer booklets and every day we the examiners actually everybody was not expecting such type of response that every day the evaluation 1.25 lakh answer script every day more than 2000 examiners from 125 cap centers all over the Maharashtra, they are evaluating. And you, you will see how evaluation, fast evaluation is going on. And that's why we'll be in position this year to declare the <coughs> results in time. We have, in addition to the live teaching support, mobile tabs, Eshwani, EduSight support, West based discussion forum, university Facebook for services, e-books, mobile application for student services. We have also installed last year the kiosk. The students, those who are coming to the campus, they should get the information with the help of the kiosk. And this year we have planned to uh, install more kiosk regional centers, even in some affiliated uh, the, our centers, at some centers. Innovative practice. I think this is the only university having, I think that is the vision of uh, Professor Takole, to have Krushi Vidnyan Kendra on campus. <laughs> we have 50 acre land <coughs> specifically for Krushi Vidnyan Kendra and conducts on-farm on -farm training to test and modify technology to make them appropriate for farmers and society. You will not believe we are selling one lakh samples of samplings of the mango. And selling is not important. How many the tribal people we have trained, that's very important. And they are having their own nurses. They are earning at least 15,000 rupees per person. And that's very important. And that kind of training has been provided by our university. Conducting training for practicing farmers, rural urban youth, and the state department extension, personals, and non-government organization with emerging advances in agriculture, horticulture, animal husbandry on regular basis. We have separate guest house for farmers. They come, they stay, they visit, and th that kind of training, you should see, even goat farming we are doing. We have the plantation of mango, and you, I think we'll arrange the visit, and so we'll see what kind of things are done at the university. Imports, short and long-term vocational training courses to generate self-employment, organizes frontline demonstration to generate production data, Facebook information, as well as popularizing the technology. The, according to Prime Minister, we have to take some villages, adopt some villages. This time, the, as per the scheme, every university is expected to adopt five villages, but we have adopted 10 villages, nine villages actually, and our Krishi Vidnyan Kendri is supporting for this purpose. I will give some programs, one or two programs. I will give the program of this patient assistant program. It's a very simple program. Some NGO is working with us. The, who is the target group? All rural girls and tribal girls from Maharashtra. The cause is woman empowerment. Mission is justice among affirmative action. And the girls are trained at Pune. They are not charged, fee is not accepted, and even food and everything is provided free to the girl till they complete the course. And this particular course, they are, we are having a type with 150 hospitals in Pune. And in that hospitals, the girls are placed, and when they will join that particular hospital, as a, they are not in nurses, otherwise uh, that another technical that are not nurses. They are health assistant, only they assist. And after this, whatever salary they are getting, they pay back only 20,000 rupees to the concern foundation. That is the one scheme we have implemented. Another thing, we are always say the graduates are there and they are not <coughs> employable. Now we have scheme which is we have started with the Lupin and this is a BSc program 
And in this particular BHC program, 500 students are there. First year, the student will get fellowship per month, 7,000. Second year, his student will get 8,000. Third year, 9,000. And at the end, they will get the BSc degree and with everybody getting the job. So there is no unemployment as far as this particular program is concerned. We have several such type of programs. This is not the time. But we have several programs, and definitely I would like to present. Another success story I would like to mention is agriculture. Here also the mission is to reach unreached through mass education, cause skill-based empowerment, 65% population living in villages, target group is practicing farmers, medium instruction is regional language that is very important, and achievement you will not believe, 2,65,000 enrollment in 25 years, 2 lakh completed the programs, 20,000 employed in government, 30,000 employed in private sector, 30,000 self-employed, and 1,20,000 engaged in modern farming, contributing more than 20% GDP agriculture in Maharashtra. That is our estimate. And you go to any nursery here, and you ask how many students are from ICU. And you will say the majority of the students, the agriculture students, they are not interested. They want white collar job. They don't want to work actually in the farm. And that is the success of this particular program. Then uh, pro pro Professor, I think Takoli will talk about this particular diploma in e-education. So I will not elaborate on this particular. This is a very challenging program, and we need support from all regulating bodies. And what about the social inclusion of disadvantaged group? And you will see how many percentage of the SC, ST, and OBC candidates. Here, social inclusion of the disadvantaged, we have only students mainly from rural area. See, the girls, 23% girls are from rural, 45% male are also from the rural. So only few percent. See, if you see our regional centers, we have very, only few uh, students in Mumbai and Pune. But if you go to the Nanded, we have more than one lakh. If you go to the Amravati, more than. So we are really, this uh, social inclusion has been achieved, Ur Urdu and all these things we have done. We arranged several workshops on exam. This was arranged with the help of the AIU. Then we give some national awards. Even we give national awards to the universities. Uh, this year, Kurukshetra is doing very good work in distance education. That's why this time, which is a one lakh award. And we give, even this is a uh, Padmasri, Temsula, he is from Nagaland. Uh, and this Kusuma Grace award was given to this. Every year, this award is given. Then this is a, some other uh, award, is, uh, this is a Kurukshetra award given by Honorable Governor of the Assam. Sports and culture, that is one thing. See, uh, I, I should thank uh, Badriji. See, our students are even not allowed to participate in EIU sports. And there was a letter. And finally, I requested Badriji to write a letter. And now EIU is considering, already they have taken the decision. And I hope the immediately they will issue order to participate. How many c candidates you know? In Olympic now, our two students are participating. Uh, they are. Uh, one is Kavita. I will show. That. I think uh, I have this. Kavita Raut. She is uh, from first year, second year, our student. And she is uh, uh, qualified for Rio Olympics. Another girl has been also qualified. Her name is, I think, some Babar. Yeah. So, Sonali Babar. She is also means two students from this university are participating in out of 99. If the two students, why yeah, you saying like this? These are the all questions I requested. Actually, he was today, he is supposed to go abroad, and that's why Secretary General is not here. But I requested him, and he agreed. He was uh, convinced the previously it was done, and will immediately change all this situation, he said. This is uh, already I have mentioned. This is the, yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. This is oh, something. That's all. <laughs> I thought that uh, I will present something. I should not have taken so much time. But I thought all the vice chancellors are here, and really I am thankful to you for accepting the invitations and be a part of this particular roundtable conference. When again, once again, I thank you all, uh, and at the end I will say. 
Once again, I welcome the, of this major academic event. We may try our best to provide the best possible services at our disposal. However, if there is any shortcoming, I think I am the responsible. I regret for those. I wish you a pleasant and memorable stay at YCMU. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir, for your welcoming address. Really, it was a motivating address to everyone of us. Now, I request our Vice Chancellor, Professor Salunke, sir, to felicitate our chief guest on the dais and as well as off the dais. I request uh, Professor Salunke, sir, to felicitate Professor Arjit Akaule, our ex Vice Chancellor of this university. You should consider me as a host also. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you are, sir. You should consider me as a host also. Yeah. <laughs> He's also host. Yeah. <laughs> we treat you as a family member, sir. <laughs> I request to felicitate Professor Ravindra Kumar. Vice Chancellor Ignu. Mr. B.K. Badri, Educational Advisor, MHRD, New Delhi. It is our pleasure to felicitate everyone in this hall. Now I request Dr. Renu Batra, Joint Secretary, New Delhi. Dr. Renu Batra, she is Joint Secretary, New Delhi, and she is looking after Distance Education Bureau and various projects in UGC. Professor K. Nageshwar Rao, VC, Uttarakhand Open University, one of the dynamic person, from Social Sciences. Welcome, sir. Professor S.S. Tarkar, Vice Chancellor, NSOU. We welcome you, sir. <laughs> Professor Arup Jyoti Saudhari, Dean Academic, State Open University, Assam. Most welcome, sir. Professor M. Bhaskaran, Vice Chancellor, TNOU. From all the parts of the India, all the Vice Chancellors, all the intelligent experts have participated in this roundtable conference. So it is our pleasure to welcome everyone. Professor RBP Singh, VC. National Open University, Patna. Sorry, Nalanda Open University, Patna.
स्टेट ओपन यूनिवर्सिटी पटना वेलकम सर प्रोफेसर श्रीकांत मोहपात्रा वाइस चांसलर ओएसओयू वेलकम सर प्रोफेसर कपिल कुमार फ्रॉम इग्नू या ही इज ए बोर्ड मेंबर या वी वेलकम यू सर प्रोफेसर उमा कंजलाल फ्रॉम इग्नू मैडम इज ए नेशनल कोऑर्डिनेटर फॉर मुख वी वेलकम यू मैम प्रोफेसर रविकांत फ्रॉम इग्नू ए गुड टीम फ्रॉम इग्नू सो वी आर वेरी हैप्पी प्रोफेसर अशोक शर्मा बीसी कोटा वर्धमान महाराष्ट्र वर्धमान ओपन यूनिवर्सिटी कोटा प्रोफेसर डी बी पाठक आई आई टी बॉम्बे यस सर अ वेल नोन टेक्नोक्रैट ओके प्रोफेसर टीचर टेक्नोक्रैट वी वेलकम यू सर या सो वंस अगेन या डॉक्टर हेमलता चारी I think uh, madam is representing Paul. Okay, idol. We welcome you, ma'am. Our inaugural. Now I request for the inaugural speech, Professor Arvi Takole. We love, we always love to hear from him. So I request once again Takole sir to deliver inaugural speech. Thank you, sir. professor sadunke all the distinguished participants from open universities from ugc from mhrd and all other institutions friends couple of days back professor sadunke phoned me and said that you have to fill in this spot <laughs> i said all right i was a professor and like to talk <laughs> but to talk on a university which you have founded with so many ideas and dreams is really a great pleasure and that's why i chose the topic also from odial to the people because this university was founded and some of the references has been made by <coughs> professor sarunke that we had always the people in mind we wanted to reach everybody and therefore the mass university was a concept all the time before us But during last 20 25 years we were counting students in terms of lakhs 
No, we have to count it in terms of millions and might be in terms of crores. Then we can say we are becoming mass forestative. Can we really move to the people? That is the point. And uh, is the same type of formal education will lead us to that type of mass varsity? Because our model which we have chosen, even though in uh, open universities, is copied from the formal structure. Teaching learning process. Change here or there. Learning process is more or less the same. If you look at the process part of it. But the structure part of it, a lot of flexibility has been brought in. Self-study material has been evolved. So many things are there, everybody knows here. So we were established on 1st of July, 1989. We started working from here. Actually on 25th of June, 1989. <laughs> but then it was gazetted on 1st. And that's why we got established officially on 1st. And there is one employee, I'm not seeing him here, who is employed here on 25th of June. Yeah. He's older than Vice Chancellor. <laughs> <laughs> because I could employ him afterwards as a Vice Chancellor. But then I could not get that employment right from 25th. I mean, that is the fun of it. Actually, our first board of management meeting was really an event. All the people there, he said, that don't offer any degrees. We are having enough universities giving so many degrees and they don't find jobs. So we should start with the skill development. Courses were less educated from the people. And that was the insistence. It was a great problem for me. We knew the fate of Allama Iqbal Open University. We started with continuing education, started only teacher training. And for 18 long years, it did not receive any recognition from any university. So that was the advice given to us by Sir Walter Perry, first founder by Chancellor of UK. And we said, let us rather have a combination of the two. So that was the balancing act. We did it. But in all such processes, let me tell you, your major focus gets shifted towards the formal focus and you are subverted. And openly let me tell you, because that was our analysis of the Andhra Pradesh Open University when we assessed it. Ram Reddy was the Vice Chancellor of IGNO at that time. And I was the, leading the team. And the answer was, the formal system has subverted our open system. And this sort of subversion, in one way or the other, is going on since then. <laughs> that is the whole point. <laughs> now, how to keep open universities open is a problem. It is a great problem. So, but one thing I must give credit to the social movement of Maharashtra. There are so many reformers in Maharashtra. Right from Chhatrapati Shahu Maharaj, Mahatma Jyotiba Phule, Baba Sahib Ambedkar, so many in the field of education have entered created a, some sort of institutional spirit to go to the people. I think that is our spirit with which we started. So that's why the, the, we'll call it our university as an expression of social interest and social development of Maharashtra. Well, still I remember when I came here as a vice chancellor, I had undergone a bypass surgery on 21st or 22nd of April and joined here as the Vice Chancellor after one month of hectic preparation. I was welcomed here. Welcome Mr. Vice Chancellor. Nashik is a very great health resort. You can recover all your health during the next five years. That was my welcome. And still I'm active. <laughs> so, so. <laughs> and and uh, reason possibly I will tell you in brain-based education, it is lifelong learning, active learning. That is the reason of the longevity. That is what's getting proved scientifically. Well, we started a number of courses dependent on the life and work of the people at the workplaces. 
In fact, workplace education was the concept we wanted to develop all the time. Not the studying at home, not studying at the study center, but rather working at a workplace and learning from there. And that's why workshops were considered as the learning places. Uh, we followed the, uh, some very important social reformers. Prayog Parivar, a group coming together and doing experiments in agriculture. That was Sripad Dabolkar, Draksha Mauli in Maharashtra. And this is the movement which started in Maharashtra, spread everywhere. And if you see the growth of grapes in Maharashtra, it is because of this Prayog Parivar. And not only rather they grew in the production of grapes, and one of our first course was grape growing, how to grow grapes. That was a course of the which we started here. They conceived the idea of empowerment of the grape growers. And therefore, the Grape Growers Association, which has a seat in Nashik, is one of the strongest association of farmers wielding power. Because they have economy, they have people with them, and therefore, all politicians rather go to them to have a proper relationship. Education can empower you through your developmental activities in such a way that power can come to you. I mean, this is the type of lessons which we learn from their exercises. Skill education, I think, uh, I'm very happy that this university has really developed different models in skill education. Actually, at one time, we were bothered. Are you a university or a technical institute? That was the type of question asked. And even when Dr. Kulalinda Swami came, he was having this as a problem with this university. And we solved it by finding out some sort of a solution. And solution was, this is our mandate. And so we have to do it. And say, all right, it's your mandate, you do it, but then be a university. Now, what is meant by university? Now, it's a que question again. University is a place of creation of knowledge, preservation of knowledge, dissemination of knowledge is known to everybody. But will it be changed in 21st century? Creation of development and creation of wealth as a part of our learning processes and development processes, can we add that and make society enriched? Because if we want to link learning with development, with creation, then these additional functions do come in. And without that, we cannot go ahead in 21st century. That, that, that's the whole point. And therefore, we found out and then we realized that skills cannot be studied unless they are linked with your brain, unless they are linked with the value in the society. So creating socially useful productive work is a part of education, but simultaneously linking those skills with the academic skills, subject related skills is also an important part of it. This realization gave us an idea of creating different models of education. Now, we are rather moving towards becoming a, but then next important stage in this part is, particularly of theory, is National Skill Development Council, which classified the skills in 10 point scale, linked with, with technological development, 